my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back. While there is a lot of outrage from citizens in New Jersey who are concerned about proposed gun ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, people there are concerned that they could potentially be turned into criminals overnight. This will be more than 1 million law-abiding, tax-paying citizens that this law could affect. Now this story, a gun range owner testified before New Jersey lawmakers against this proposed ban on the magazines. Anthony P. Calandro, he's also the co-host for Gun for Hire Radio. He basically told these New Jersey officials that you can write these laws against us tax-paying, law-abiding citizens, but we're not going to follow them. And he called the lawmaker's attention to Connecticut and said, one million gun owners in New Jersey are also going to say, like our brothers and sisters in the North, that we will not comply. And I can tell you here and now, I will not comply. And that sentiment is being echoed by their neighbors in Rhode Island. People there are also concerned that a proposed gun ban is going to turn them into criminals as well. So, of course, they were having a hearing there, and this is what their state senator, their representative, had to say to his constituents, including our own correspondent, Dan Badandi. How do these gun laws take the guns from criminals? In one mouth, and you think you have two mouths in one ear. Three mouths, actually. You got it confused. No answers, of course. The majority is outside. The numbers. Yeah, the Second Amendment shall not be infringed. You people need to understand that. Yeah. Go f yourself. Comment, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Go f yourself. Good comment, sir. Go f yourself. Comment, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Go f yourself. Good comment, sir. Dan Badandi, welcome. Once again, you have released the Kraken. <laughs> How are you doing, Leanne? I'm doing all right. Thank you. So what were you asking them that they responded to you in that way? Well, basically just asking, um, how does gun control take guns out of the arms and hands of criminals? And that question they could not answer. And they give you, you know, softball questions, basically circular reasoning questions, the answer. And, but never address the situation. How does gun control take the guns away from criminals? They can't answer that, so they snarl at you. And when I expressed about the Second Amendment shall not be infringed, I got told blatantly, go F myself. Yeah, exactly. And these, these are the elected representatives there. Oh, yeah. And these are people supposed to support the people. These are people supposed to be on a sworn oath on the Constitution to accept that office. Exactly, to uphold the Constitution. I think he said after that little altercation that he believes in the First and Second Amendment, well, part of the Second Amendment is it shall not be infringed, which you exactly. reminded him of that. So, And uh, he, I uh, mean, I heard that today during an interview that he uh, said he's for the Second Amendment. But the thing is, if you're for the Second Amendment, why are you supporting these draconian gun bills? There's several of them here in Rhode Island, which we believe is going to get shot down again. We had a major victory here in Rhode Island last year about this time, and now we're going to do it again. But these bills are draconian. And if he supports the Second Amendment, he should be standing against us, regardless of what party he's in. Exactly. And I heard someone mentioning there that the majority was on the outside with you. How many people were, were at that hearing? Oh, that was my cameraman, Kevin LaPrade. Uh, he's uh, the cameraman that when we meet to Boston uh, mm -hmm. there last year. Uh, basically, because they were saying, they were, you know, what the speakers were saying, we're the majority, we're the majority, and they kept bragging about it. But it was about 30 to 40 of them versus over 500 patriots outside the steps of the uh, state house. And that was only, you know, people that couldn't make it there. There was, you know, it could have been thousands of uh, pro Second Amendment supporters there. But, you know, they had work. It was a work business day. And again, it was uh, 30 to 40 of them compared to over 500 of us. 
Yeah, and this is obviously something that's really important to you. You are not afraid. You're definitely a true patriot. And then here, these guys have the audacity to, like, what did they think? That your little conspiracy website wasn't going to get, <laughs> go viral? Oh, yeah, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, Josh Miller, um, he used that in his defense today to try to justify why he swore. He apologized for swearing, but he tried to uh, demonize me to say, but Don belongs to conspiracy websites and news media is referring to Infowars.com and TruthRadioShow.com and uh, basically trying to demonize me from all on every other end except for the point, what about the Second Amendment? Exactly. He's. It's basically what he's saying is that he can't we can't depend on him to be able to control himself and, and act in a professional way. And clearly, we can't depend on him to uphold the Constitution as well, because he's there trying to make laws against it. And then insulting you, the citizen, and that the exact attitude he'd have toward the rest of the constituents there in Rhode Island. So what were they, what was the hearing about there that day? The hearing was um, to address several gun bills mm -hmm. that are being pre presented by the same uh, representative, uh, Joseph Almedia, um, that proposing several gun bills. And with these gun bills, um, they limit high capacity magazines, uh, certain firearms, and they even get to the detail of what kind of firearm it is. And it's most firearms that uh, people own generally. Right, exactly. They kind of be make it very generalized, which how many residents is that going to affect, basically turn into a criminal overnight? Um, way, well over 100,000. I mean, Rhode Island's a very strong uh, Second Amendment state. Mm -hmm. And the reason, because last year we shot down the gun bill last year, you know, when they were pro you know, presenting it all over New England because of the Sandy Hook uh, shooting. Uh, but yeah, we well over 100,000 people here in Rhode Island, if not more. I mean, that that's what I could think of. But I mean, we have gun clubs everywhere, gun shooting ranges everywhere. So we have a predominantly uh, Second Amendment supporting state. And so you're making quite a name for yourself there. I guess you're getting kicked out of city council meetings and all kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I can't take the real questions. When I brought exactly. up the fact that Adam Lanza passed six schools on his way to uh, Sandy Hook, why did he choose that school? Because, one, it was a gun-free zone. And second of all, most of all, he was, like the other shooters, he was doped up on psychotropic drugs. Right then and there, the Madam Speaker jumps up and starts screaming at me to get out. And, you know, she's pro uh, for the, um, the bills. So, of course, she didn't want that information getting out. So, you know, she tells me to get out. Right. They're so afraid to address the root of the issues. It's, it's much like the pharmaceuticals themselves. They don't address the root of the issue. It's just there to cover up the symptoms. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. But like you pointed out, it's not going to actually take the guns out of the hands of the criminals. It'll be out of the law-abiding citizens' hands. Oh, absolutely. And what they do is um, I was listening to the hearings because uh, I was here for hours waiting for my uh, turn to testify. Everyone that was for these bills was exploiting the children at Sandy Hook to use it for their uh, unconstitutional Second Amendment hating agenda. And I got mad. And I, I said, how dare people in the video, how dare people exploit the children at Sandy Hook to push this agenda? You know, because it's sick. Then why should we have to give up our rights when a gun, if there was armed security at that school or one of the teachers had a gun, those kids would be alive and well today. So what did you think that, uh, what do you think Josh Miller was thinking when he thought that he'd be offending you and answering you in such a way? It just, I guess he really did not understand the reach that Dan Badandi has now that video has gone viral. Well, they don't understand because, again, you get the mainstream media who loves, they hit the politicians with these uh, prefabricated questions. In other words, the politicians know most of the time what they're going to be asked, and they have the perfect answers. But when a real reporter comes up to them with a real question, and this is not the question for me, but this is a question from all gun owners. They all ask the same thing. So it's like, all right, I'm going to use that question to ask these guys that. And they can't answer it. And they'll come up again uh, with circular reasoning, but never addressing how gun control takes guns out of the hands of criminals. And they bring up the rate, 30 plus thousand people die a year from guns, but they don't express how most of them, over 95% of them, are due from criminals, not honest citizens, but criminals shooting people or cops shooting criminals, and there's a small percentage of gun accidents. But they bring up 30,000 people a year, and they exploit that to you know try to fit their agenda. Right, exactly, or cops shooting innocent yeah. people and their dogs. 
And you're right. You're absolutely right. They are afraid of people asking them the tough questions, which is exactly what citizens and reporters, journalists, everyone needs to be doing, is asking the tough questions and finding out just why are they passing these draconian gun laws. What did you think about Miller's response, who he said that you were intimidating and aggressive and that you were intimidating elderly veterans, members of the clergy, and victims of violence? Well, um, I was I basically asked them the same questions, and they didn't want to answer them. So I'm saying, hey, answer this, because you're up there speaking on how we should take guns away, how guns are bad. And one of the reverends, I got a video on my same YouTube channel, one of the reverends, now he was up there saying that killing's a sin, and it's against the uh, uh, Ten Commandments and so, but then again, he's pro-abortion which is a total contradiction. But again, you had all these speakers up there who were for the gun, you know, for the gun bills, but they contradict themselves in the long run. So when you ask them these real questions, they don't know how to answer you because again, you're not mainstream media and you didn't give them the questions ahead of time so they could prepare for it. Right, exactly. And that's a very interesting point. What do you want to say to Miller and who was the guy that was there standing with he the guy that was there next to him that chimed in afterward. He reminds me of like if if you're ever trolled on the internet by those paid yeah. government shills. He is a paid government troll. He just chimed oh, he in. <laughs> I don't know his name we're trying to find out who he is. Um, I know he's uh, some kind of journalist, a photographer, or something, but every time I go to the state house because I'm there a lot, I see him there and the guy to the right of him uh, this guy, um, if you can see him in the video, the, to the right of Von right, you know, um, Miller's left. Uh, this guy kept pulling people away. Now I'm going there pleasantly. How you doing? I shake their hands. Uh, I'm asking the question. Now this guy comes over, and I don't know who the guy is, but he's pulling people away from, you know, tell him don't, you know, don't answer his questions. And we're trying to find who these people are. But, I mean, we had a lot of trolls there. We know a lot of politicians are behind us. And they know who I am, um, especially in the state house, because I'm there all the time. So, they, again, they don't like the hardball questions. Well, exactly. Do you think you're going to be getting any more Secret Service visits? I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, like, <laughs> these people are crazy. And um, like Alex was saying on the show today, they're going to pull out all the stops and... You know, we, we, he was talking about the, the nukes going on off in New York and all that. And But the thing is, they don't like people like us. They don't like people like me, Alex Jones, you, uh, Rob Dew, and everybody else there because we ask the real questions. We give the real news. We're not Republican, Democrats. We tell how it is. And that's what they fear. And like I tell everybody, the video camera is the best weapon against tyranny. Not a gun, which is good to have a gun, but... Um, in this t type of journalism, a video camera is the best weapon against these tyrants because the video cameras don't lie. Exactly, and that's why they're trying to create all these laws now and say, well, you're not a journalist, so you're not protected, and you can go to prison or even arresting citizens for filming police because they know it is the ultimate defense against tyranny. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, if you're not a A&P journalist, okay, you're not a reporter, according to uh, these people here. And the thing is, Bay and P, um, yeah, they give us some good uh, news and all that, but I mean, we know some good reporters have worked for them. But again, they get censored through their editors and everything else. But, it, you know, people in the alternative media, we're far more better reporters. I mean, I'm not gloating about myself, but we're far better more uh, um, reporters because we tell the truth. We ask hardball questions. We tell it like it is, and people don't like that. You know, well, the politicians don't anyway. But if you see the support we have, um, if you go to Joe, Joe, Josh Miller's uh, Facebook and his websites and everything else, you see more people are they basically telling him to resign, that he's a criminal against the Constitution. We're getting overwhelming support, not just here in Rhode Island, but all over the country. Yeah, and that's what I love is that I just, I mean, the look on his face when he answered you, I just, I, I don't think he had any idea what he was getting himself into. Wow. With We have patriots that love America and that hate tyranny and that will stand up against that. He had no idea. Anything else you want to say to Josh Miller or anyone out there? Oh, uh, yeah, Josh Miller, uh, Gordon Fox, which he's now in the um, investigation by the FBI. He's another senator. And all you people around, not just around, but all over the country, every politician out there. There's a thing called the Constitution of the United States, the Second Amendment. And we as Americans, we do not bow to tyranny. You know, back in 1776, we fought against the British. Right here in Rhode Island, we were the first state to declare our independence against the British because they wanted to impose gun laws. And we'll do it again against this tyrannical government if we have to do that. 
But the thing is, we're promoting a peaceful revolution. Again, the video camera is the most powerful weapon. We're not encouraging people to go out and shoot anybody. We are telling people to get out there with the video cameras, confront these politicians, make them be held accountable for all their actions. Exactly. Shoot them with your video.